What's up, strongest men, women, and children from blocks all around the world? I am my block's strongest man, and tonight I have a very special guest for you, the legendary Travis Ortmeyer. Ciao, homie! Welcome back to My Block Strongest Man, where we bring strong men into the mainstream by discussing all of the latest strong man events in the greatest analytic detail that you'll find anywhere on YouTube. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe to this channel. Make sure to comment below whether you agree or disagree with my videos. I love the engagement and I respond to every single comment. Now on to today's topic. Like all that being said, would you return to Mammoth next year? Absolutely. Absolutely. Dave, Dave was a fun guy. He took care of us and he's a smart guy. You know, we, he already talked to me about what he's going to do different next year. He, he saw what happened. He saw some things needed to be, you know, switched around, changed up a little bit. And uh, I absolutely have no doubt in my mind that it's going to be even better twice the show that it was this year, next year. Yeah, same here. I mean, for anybody who hasn't watched it yet, I'll put the link in the description below. You should check it out. Dave had more than anyone could expect a promoter's hands to be full. I mean, there were three different competitions going on there. There was Highland yeah. Games going on there. It's just yeah. the, fa the fact that it yeah. you know went as smoothly as it did is miraculous. That's kind of what I was, I'm referring to. I mean, there was like 147 athletes or something in total with a record breakers on top of it. Yep. There's yeah, for sure. For anyone to bite off. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned something about like um, you could have gone and grabbed some food or whatever. I think that's a good topic. So non-strength athletes, I think, don't appreciate what strong men and strong <laughs> women have to eat in a day. And uh, like Brian Shaw has been pretty public lately. He's been trying to cut a little bit of weight and how he's like starving all the time. So kind of. Like, how do you see the eating that is required of you? Are you used to it now? Is it a chore? Like, what are your thoughts there? It, it used to be the absolute hardest thing for me to do was to eat enough. And it's still, you know, it's still a lot of work. It's, you have to prepare. You have to, I try to meal prep twice a week, Wednesdays and Sunday nights. Um, you know, I cook several pounds of meat at one time and, and uh, basically follow almost the same diet every day with little modifications here and there just to see what those modifications do with regard to my performance. Um, so it's, it's painstaking and it's, uh, you know, competing and lifting huge weights is glamorous. Sitting down to eat yet another freaking bowl of ground beef and potatoes and something is not glamorous. It sucks. <laughs> it's uh you people want to see all the stars and the bright lights and all that stuff, but they don't understand the multitude of the, the huge amount of work that it takes to get there. Um, and that's the hardest part. It's uh, I'm naturally not a massive eater. You know, even if I'm depressed, I, I stop eating. I'm not a eating. I'm not a depressed eater kind of thing. If I get sick, I don't eat. I'm not one who feeds themselves. I don't eat a lot of shit food. And and that's the other thing is when I, I'm doing my diet, it's pretty clean. It's, it's relatively clean. Unless I get a cheat meal and I get a, uh, I get a freshetta or a DiGiorno pizza and I cut up a steak on top of it. That's, that's like heaven. I love those. <laughs> and if I'm doing my diet right, which means it's clean most of the time, I can do that a few times a week. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it really doesn't impact my physique as far as like, putting too much fat on me. Um, I have been heavier. I've been fatter in the past. I've been 23% body fat at like 341 pounds. Um, that was actually when I started working with my nutritionist in the very beginning, back in 2009, I worked with the same guy, Nathan Payton, who does Brian Shaw, Lisa, Eddie Hall. Yep. His first big athlete that he worked with right out of school. Um, so I was at 341, 23% body fat, you know, boobs hanging over and big old gut. My face, I gained a lot of weight in my face when I gained it. Um, and we, we leaned me out a little bit before World's Strongest Man that year. And uh, I was strong as I could be, but I got even better 
the next few months going into the Arnold 2010, I was like 311, 312 with 11% body fat. Wow. I was like, tank. I was, I felt so good. It was the best contest I think I ever had. <clears throat> you know, if, if I'd have been able to keep that shape going into world's strongest man later in 2010, I, without a doubt, would have won that competition. But that's more that woulda, coulda, shoulda shit, you know. <laughs> no, but that's inter- that's interesting because uh, I think a lot of people uh, a lot of people get into the like you have to be really, really heavy to be successful. So it's interesting you say that. Yeah, and it's hard to it's hard to deny that logic because it worked for Eddie Hall. I mean, it worked really well for him. Uh, but I think a lot of guys, I think that's part of what contributes to a short life expectancy in strong run. You know, the guys are in for four or five years and then they fizzle out because their body's like, fuck this. I'm done. I can't handle this anymore. And they start getting injured. They start having health problems. You know, the body doesn't want to be hugely overweight, especially not if it's gained quickly. You know, if you gain 10 pounds, 15 pounds a year, slowly but surely your body's gonna be a lot happier than if you gain 30 or 40 pounds a year and try to keep doing that yep yeah i actually did a video about world's strongest man winners all of them and what their bmis were and eddie is by far the highest bmi of any any uh world's strongest man winner ever big, see that. big z is yeah. number two. <laughs> oh big z is number two <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like I said, I, I I do analytics for a living, so I love this shit. And like, I, I put out videos. <laughs> <about all> <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. That's that computer nerd stuff. I love it. So yeah. that's where the uh, the analytics for the competitions came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like yeah, how you did that. Yeah. I'll, I got I got to send you a couple of the links. You might like them. Yeah, I had a uh, I did another one about like. Uh, debunking the myth of Novikov is too small to win. I did like a histogram statistics where like he, he actually fell into the right height and weight for where most winners are. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. 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 I, nice. I think you'll like them. I'll, I'll send you a couple of them. I think you'll like okay. them. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully I can fit into that at some point. Yeah. Yeah. How tall are you? Six, three. I was six, four when I started strong, man, I might be six, three and a half now. Okay. That's not too bad. Like I'm just a touch shorter than I was 20 years ago. That's it's- not too bad. I don't. I don't know if you've ever heard Hulk Hogan tell the story. He said he used to be six seven and he's six four now from doing that leg drop all those years. His spine compressed. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I mean, that's a big difference. I feel fortunate. I, I, I owe it to a lot of therapy, a lot of stretching. Being being pliable is probably one of the main reasons I'm around as long as I'm around. Yep. I'm very flexible. I've got really good range of motion. This is my repaired shoulder. I've got full range of motion, you know, flexibility yeah. with everything. And for <laughs> sure, for sure. I mean, I used to have back problems all the time, and uh, part of it was hydration, but part of it, I started doing DDP yoga. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but a uh, former wrestler who broke his back in the ring kind of came up yes. with his yoga. Yeah. I'm thinking about doing that. I've been thinking about trying that. So you got to tell me if you, uh, where you go or how you do that. Diamond Dallas is, yoga, right? Diamond Dallas Pitt. He's yes. awesome. He, he actually broke his back. He was in bed and his wife at the time, who was also a wrestler, told him you should do some yoga to help you feel better. And he's like, yoga's for chicks. I'm not doing that. <laughs> and um, she, She's like, all right, stay in bed immobile then. And then uh, I kind of clicked for him. He's like, all right, I'll try it. And it helped him so much that he created his own system. And uh, he's helped like countless people turn their lives around and lose yeah. weight. You know, I couldn't like reach down past my knees before I put like flat hands on the floor. Now I'm so much more flexible than before. It's really, really a miracle worker. It's how you bounce when you fall. It's how you bounce up. You know, it's yeah. Yeah. so you're the second person that has hit me up with that in recent history. So that, that's oh, really? tell me something. I'm going to give it yeah. a shot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, we'll keep in contact. I'll give you some tips. There we go. All right. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. <laughs> So I was just wondering who, like, of all your competitions, who's your favorite other strongman to compete with? Like, who do you get along with the best or just feel like you uh, have a good competition with? You know, I got a couple of them. I, I've had a couple good rivalries that always brought out the best in me. Probably the first one was uh, Jesse Marundi. And then, of course, he passed away in 2007. And, uh, yeah. After that was Derek Poundstone. And Derek, Derek and I went head to head. 
hard. You know, he did a little better at the Arnold. He won the Arnold uh, a couple times, I think. And uh, and then he was second at World's Strongest Man in 2008. Um, I think I was ahead of him in 2009, and I know I was ahead of him in 2010. But, uh, you know, we went back and forth. Of course, Derek won Fortissimus 2008. We went back and forth so many times because the week before Fortissimus was uh, – Madison Square Garden, where I beat him. He just recovered much better than I did in that week time span, and he kicked my ass at Fortissimus. So <laughs> he, if I saw Derek's name on the list, I knew I had to be ready. I knew I was going to have to put everything I could into it, and I was going to have to be on top of my game to beat him. And so competing with him always brought out the best in me. And I think I've heard him say the same thing. He said – you know, that's one of the biggest compliments I feel I've ever received was Derek saying that, uh, you know, when he competed against me, it brought out the absolute best in him. And I mean, while that's really cool, <clears throat> and it's probably, you know, it's one of my most cherished memories. There were times like 2009 America's Strongest Man, where the rest of the field was here. And we were so far ahead. I don't think we had to do the last three events. Wow. He's beat the other guys. Maybe it was the last two events. Uh, we were so far ahead, like 40 points ahead, but still killing each other because he wasn't going to let me beat him, and I was not going to let him beat me. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, it was really cool, but it also kind of accounted for a lot of pain and suffering. Because <laughs> no, no chance of us giving in and letting the other guy win. Um, but some of the guys I think that are probably the most fun to compete with, I always got along really well with Misha Kuklaev. Mm -hmm. you know, I always say he's my brother from another motherland. <laughs> <laughs> nice. he's, uh, he's a good guy. I, we've been we've been around the world together. We've gotten into a lot of trouble together. We've uh, <laughs> done a lot of stupid shit. Had a lot of fun and then had some really good competitions competing with him. He's another one who brought out the best in me because, you know, if he was there, he was going to be tough and it was going to be me or him. Whoever just had a little bit more fight in him that day was going to come out on top. I forget. Did he win Arnold's? He took second to Derek Poundstone in 2009. And it came down to if Derek had missed his last deadlift, Misha would have won. And Derek, okay. that was when Derek did the famous Poundstone hitch. We kind of rolled it on top of his quad, sat there for a second, and then pulled it up. So that's why I use that as an example. It created a lot of controversy between <laughs> in that show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, Big Laws has said a few times that he thinks Derek Poundstone is the strongest man to never win World's Strongest Man. I think he, I think he probably is, you know, he, he was literally this close to winning, you know, with that last stone in 2008, if he'd have gotten it a little higher, it wouldn't have spun on the edge and fallen yeah. and he was ahead of Marius at that point. So yeah, it was almost like fate came down and just pushed that stone off the edge for him. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like the other side of the coin. Is there somebody you always wanted to compete against, but the situation never presented itself? Uh, yeah. Let's see. See, I competed with Marius. I competed with... I competed with most of the great guys. I think it comes down to now. I want to compete with the top guys at the moment. Um, I mean, I, I competed with Thor. I competed with Brian. All those guys. Um... You know, I've beaten those guys. I've also lost to those guys. Uh, I think, though, the one name on the list that I would love to compete against again would be Zadrunas because I have never beaten him. And I would love nothing more than to beat him in a full contest. Mm -hmm. I beat him that Guinness record thing, but that was one event. It was my event. So <laughs> <laughs> I want to beat him in a full-on contest. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a good guy to pick on <laughs> to try to beat. 
you know, you can say what you want about Eddie and Thor and Brian. Zadrunas is the best strongman of all time. You can't argue with this record. He's got more wins in more competitions, bigger competitions, more world records, and more total competitions. I mean, he, the dude is a machine. Yeah, I mean, I, I think anybody who is seriously talking about it puts Big Z1 <laughs> and maybe Brian 2. Or Marius too. Marius had a lot of wins, and he was so dominant in his in his era. Um, but I go back to the if so world strongest man split. Marius would not have been as dominant had that split not occurred. Right. So he got a few extra years of being dominant because of that split. Yeah, I mean, especially with Big Z taking some years to get going with his wins, like his concentration of wins all in a is is crazy. It began in two thousand five. It began at the IFSA split. That was that was when Z became a different beast. You could see it. You could see it in him. He was a different man. He, uh, yeah, I remember at that time he had this little doctor that would go around with him to all his shows. He was like this little mad scientist doctor. You know, he'd be over there putting tape on with a little red laser and helping stretch and these creams and friggin' warming them up. And, you know, <laughs> and he always wore this little green jacket. So we called him the little green man. But, uh, you know, that was, he had a couple of years of that, but he just became a different beast when he had, I think, somebody in his corner really helping him with all the little things. And, uh, you know, he proved it. He was dominant in 2009. He came in and he won world's strongest man. And, and, you know, say what you want. I think he would have beaten Marius all those years up to that after 2005. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, there, there, there's something to be said just for being in that conversation, that goat conversation. Speaking of on Thursday, I got Donna Moore coming up. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Pretty awesome. Yeah. I'm yeah. excited. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, she's yeah okay. Yeah, I think I mean is she like the only is she the only woman to lift the Denny Stones? No, there've been a few. Yeah. Um, Jan Todd was the first. Okay. In the nineteen seventies, and then there were a few. Right around the time that she did that, I think there were a couple more that did it. And I I could be wrong, but maybe Lifa Ingalls tried it, or maybe she just lifted the Husafell Stone. Okay. Um, I know there, there there's a very short list of it though. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a very short list. <laughs> it's crazy. So we've been talking a lot of strong man. What hobbies do you have outside of strength training? Oh man, you know, there's not a whole lot that occupies my time outside of the strength world because I'm so focused with my coaching. And then uh, when I'm not training, I guess learning, learning about the human, hacking the human experience. So trying to find different ways to manipulate our biology and our physiology and make it work to our benefit. I guess that kind of come by that honestly with how I got myself out of my nightmare of darkness. Right. Um, it's just something that interests me, the, the mind body connection and, so I do a lot of studying on that. I uh, I guess I, I have all my plants, my carnivorous plant. I've tried to find flies to feed it. You know, that's kind of fun. That's pretty cool. <laughs> they don't take that much time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, so what would you say is next and exciting in your future? What are your plans? Let's see. I'm going to uh, – I've got a contest in Russia coming up. Um, nice. I was pushing a little too hard too soon. That's why I keep straining this thing. But um, there's a few shows that are coming up this year that are going to be pretty fun. That, uh, you know, I think it'll be a pretty busy year. So, you know, with all things aligning and everything going right, then uh, I'll be able to compete in probably around nine or 10 shows. And that's with the virus shutting down most of the world. So that's quite a lot. That is exciting. That's, well, that's <laughs> with my history. That's, that's a pretty average mediocre year that I've, I've done 18 a few times. Really? And wow. you know, at least half of those were overseas. So that's amazing. 
when people are like, what's your advice for a you know, professional athlete starting out in strongman? I'm like, or anybody starting out in the strongman. And I, the first thing I say is compete and compete often, get better at competing. And they're like, well, how many shows is a, a good number for a, a person to do? Maybe three to five? <laughs> I'm the wrong person to ask that question to. And I'll say that. I'm like, look, <laughs> yeah. if you do it three in a row, that's kind of a lot, but doable. I've done five in a row, you know, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a terrible person to ask. When it comes to that, <laughs> this is why I didn't ask you that question. See, that's what makes me a good interviewer. I got you to answer that question without me asking it. That's a fair point. <laughs> <laughs> Sneaky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> me. me. Why don't we uh, wrap it up? Um, why don't you tell everybody how they can follow you? I don't know if you have sponsors you want to shout out. Anything you want to promote, feel free. Yeah, I, uh, I do a lot of stuff on Instagram, Travis underscore Ortmeyer. Um, that's probably where the easiest way to get a hold of me for coaching or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I've got, uh, you know, Cerberus helping me out with equipment and stuff. And then, uh, build fast formula, which is a, a Chris Duff and mad scientist Duffin brand. Uh, but they're supplements. They're pretty awesome. They're pretty awesome. I enjoy them a lot. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, other, other sponsors got, uh, Chi makes the Chi Palm, that uh, little handheld device that, mm -hmm. you know, helped me with the scar tissue that was forming here. It also helps me get over all my injuries. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I, you know, I've got a few people that are helping me out and uh, it's, it's a tough sport. You can't really do it alone. So, you know, for anybody watching this, if you go to uh, Chi.us or CerberusStrength.us or BuildFastFormula.com and then check out their products, use their stuff. It's, uh, it's good. You can also get a little discount, build fast formula, put in Travis O Cerberus dash strength us. Just put in TX stone, man, get a little discount there. And it makes me look good and it keeps them wanting to work with me. So I would really appreciate it. <laughs> oh yeah, man. No, no, thanks for shouting all them out. I'll uh, put all that info in the description below for everybody to check out. And again, Travis, thanks for taking, uh, all this uh, an hour and 45 minutes here oh, with Jesus. you. Uh, <laughs> I, I hope I didn't keep you up past your bedtime, brother. Oh no, man, you get me talking about strong, man. It just keeps going. You know, I got so much history, so many stories to tell about it. I, it's always fun to talk about it, man. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. So uh, if you want to hang out a minute after we, uh, I go off air, tell me if you want to cut anything, but okay. so the way, the way that we say goodbye on this channel, Travis, ciao, homie. <laughs> ciao. <laughs> <laughs> so if you like this video and haven't done so yet please consider subscribing using that button right there and also stay tuned for some other videos that you might love blooping up right there this one is the one that youtube thinks that you will like the best and this one is the one that i think you will like the best as always share this with everyone and until next time ciao homie